Much ink has been spilled as to what went wrong in this week's Parsha, Parshat Korach. At first blush, there's nothing particularly offensive about the complaint of Korach and his company. 250 Israelites, tribal leaders, men of repute, joining together against Moses and Aaron. You've gone too far, the entire community says. Kulam Kedoshim, everyone is holy. Why do you raise yourself up above the Lord's congregation? Some commentators have suggested that it was a public nature of the complaint that was a sin. Others understand that behind Korach's words sat a bald grab for power, invoking democracy to hide his demagoguery. I think it's altogether significant that the text identifies Korach and his delegation as Anshe Shem, people of repute. The sensitive biblical reader knows that any time, any time status is established due to name or lineage, beware. Sometimes at that point, something bad is about to happen. In the generation of the flood, with the failed mission of last week's scouts, and now with Korach and his company, generations are doomed due to the bluster of Anshe Shem, people of repute who believe that it's their titles that give them authority. Jewish history is full of great personalities, individuals who achieve majesty of rank and of spirit, but in every case, the litmus test for Jewish leadership is an abiding humility. As a Kabbalist, Moshe Chaim Luzato points out, Abraham, Moses, Aaron, David, and other of our heroes are conferred title, and each one without fail believes themselves to be unworthy. Moses, who speaks to God with an intimacy never repeated, is also the humblest man on earth. Korach's sin was that he believed the conferment of a title was in and of itself a guarantee of stature. As the Hasidic master Noam Elimelech of the Gents explained, everyone needs two eyes, the first to see the greatness of God and the second to see his or her own lowliness. We need to keep an eye on, literally, both. We are ordinary mortals called on to perform extraordinary deeds as befits creatures created in the divine image. See you in shul.